Welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to talk blah, blah, blah. Take two. Welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to give my impression of Harman's Phoenix color negative film. Unless you've been living under a rock, you probably are aware that Ilford has a new color negative film. Now, this is Harman that makes the Ilford black and white products, not Ilford Switzerland. So it's named Harman Phoenix, not Ilford, since the contract to use the Ilford name specifies that it must be existing black and white products. Uh, this is an experimental film. They are working towards a finished product and this is sort of the first step or rough draft, if you would. I will say they sent a bunch of film to a bunch of, of YouTubers. I was not one of them and I am only a little bit salty about that. Harmon, if you're watching, please include me next time. I would love to try stuff out with you all. Uh, so I went out and got myself a couple of rolls. What I'm going to do is hopefully add a little bit to uh, the information that's out there because there, there's lots of samples. You can see lots of samples online from a lot of people. Um, I'm trying to bring something a little bit different. So what I'm doing today is shooting Phoenix alongside Adox's Color Mission, which is also kind of an experimental interpretation of a rough draft film. Now, it's a little bit different. Adox contracted out to make Color Mission, and now they're using the money, much like Harmon is, from sale of Color Mission to fund the research and development of a color negative film. But they did not produce Color Mission themselves. We don't know exactly who did because they won't talk about who actually coded it. We have a few suspects, but no one for sure. On the other hand, Harmon did produce this one all on their own based off their XP2 uh, black and white product. Um, and then we're also, segue back, we're going to compare it to Fuji 200. Uh, this is their consumer grade film, not professional grade film. And this is the pre Kodak gold version. So this is the older version. Uh, I actually had a roll left over from something else and it's still good through the end of this month before the uh, technical expiration date. So we're going to shoot that 200 speed com uh, consumer grade film alongside color mission and Phoenix and kind of look at the differences between them. Not to be like a versus head on head uh, sort of thing, but more just what are these differences and, and what can we kind of base our ourselves on. But being kind of technical on a lot of things, I also went ahead, used my sensitometer and created curves for all three of these films as well uh, in order to see what these curves look like and kind of give us an idea of what's going on behind the scenes. Now, the interesting thing about Phoenix is they use the XP2 product as the basis. And XP2, if you're not familiar with it, is a black and white film, but a C41 process. So it uses dye couplers like a color negative film, but it only creates a black dye. And because it's made for printing on black and white materials, it has a gray or bluish purplish base like a black and white film, not the orange mask like a color negative. Now Kodak had kind of a similar product at one time. It was BW400CN. It also was a C41 film to produce black and white prints, but it was meant to produce black and white, black and white prints on RA4 color paper in a one hour machine. So it had the orange base, made it very, very hard to print on black and white materials as a lot of my students found out when they didn't listen to what I told them of what film they should and should not get in photo one. And so a lot of students would go out, buy the BW400CN, 
develop it in sprint chemistry and then wonder why nothing worked because it's C41. This is based off of that, but they have added additional layers with the dye couplers of red, blue, and green, or cyan, magenta, yellow. I don't know which dye is actually use, but that's neither here nor there. Uh, but it still has that purplish base. Now, in future iterations, I would assume that they go for the orange base. This, I feel like, was more proof of concept sort of film. They could make a small scale version in the lab. Could they scale it up to commercial master roll size? The only really way to find out is to do it. So they make a master roll, they cut it up, they package it, they sell it. I'm hoping that as it progresses and um, their work gets further along that they'll go back to the orange dye so that we can find out if it you know, scans well, prints well, and all that sort of stuff. Uh, when it comes to scanning, uh, you'll see from, from my results, which uh, I've got a, a handful here, the Colors are going to be a little bit different than other people's. I've seen some examples from people that has kind of a, a reddish cyan crossover color. Um, mine did not turn out quite like that. And I think a lot of it has to do with how you're digitizing the film. Uh, I used my Epson 4990 flatbed scanner and Silverfast software. And I was expecting to have to go through and tweak a lot of stuff, but Silverfast actually did a really good job, even with that non-orange base of flipping the colors and getting a, a really good um, color on there. But as you can see, it is very, very contrasty. Uh, let's go ahead and look at the curves real quick. So first off, we have the graph. This is Fuji 200, and we can see the red and green layers really mimicking each other. The curves are about the same. And then that blue and yellow layer kind of uh, crossing up a little bit. Um, the crossover on the blue and yellow uh, coming in a little bit higher contrast. That could just be C200. I've not really graphed this uh, beyond the original video using this film to see if the new version was Kodak Gold. Um, oh, and before we look at the others, I will say normally when you do sensitometry, and if you're interested in learning more about that, I've got a video series on sensitometry uh, much further in depth. But normally when you do that, you just plot the raw data. You do not subtract the base fog from the readings and the measurements of the channels. In this case, because two films had the orange back and one did not, I did subtract the base fog from all three. And so we were reading and graphing only the information above base fog. So uh, just to be clear, this is slightly different than a normal H and D curve would be made in terms of measuring sensitometry. They were also all exposed exactly the same in the sensitometer. They were not filtered based on the different speeds. Um, and they are three different speeds. Fuji is 200. Uh, color mission is a little bit lower, around 160, I would say. And the Harman, I really got... I shot it at 125. That's where the engineers say it actually reads at. But based on the shadow information, I probably could have gone all the way to 100 or even 80 to get the shadow information up there. They're basing the 200 on more uh, hands-on experience to keep the highlights from getting too crazy because of the contrast. All right, so we see the Fuji graph, the color emission graph, very, very similar. We've got the red and green really kind of shadowing each other, and then the blue and yellow uh, curve a little bit steeper, a little bit higher contrast. Then we get to Harman. So Phoenix has all three curves shadowing each other, a little bit different. We don't have 
the blue and yellow crossing over with a higher contrast, but we do see all three with much higher contrast than the other two. Hard to tell on a separate graph. So if we put all three of them together on the same graph, and it is a little bit jumbled, so my apologies for all the information in one curve, uh, we've got Fuji as a solid line, we have Color Mission as a dashed line, and then Harman Phoenix as the dotted line. And you can see the extreme contrast and density built up with the Harman Phoenix. So it definitely a lot of contrast. You can also see that the toe at the bottom is shifted much further to the right. That's the slower speed of each layer. All right, so that is our curve set. Uh, the examples, and to shoot this, I did the same things with gold. I have three camera bodies and then one lens so that the lens doesn't influence different image. I just move the lens from one camera to the next. And so we are shooting the same scene, uh, set up a tripod so that all three shots were exactly the same, metered for the, each film, and then exposed them theoretically uh, identical. I uh, started with a color checker chart, so you can see here that we have fairly similar colors from Fuji to Color Mission, but when we get to Phoenix, definitely color shifts in different things. You can also see Color Mission is grainier than Fuji, um, and then Phoenix is very grainy compared to the other two. And this shot really exemplifies that graininess. And then as we go to some of these other shots, I'm going to uh, stop talking at you and just let you look at the images uh, one by one. And we're gonna go Fuji, Color Mission, Harman on each one. Um, so let's look at a few and then wrap things up. There we are. So what are my thoughts on the film? I think it's a good film. Uh, I think it's a fun film to shoot. It's definitely got a lot of character. It is not a finished product. And I think it's very clear looking at these images is, is definitely not. And they're not trying to pretend that it is. It is a rough draft. It's a first attempt and it's a pretty good attempt for one year's worth of time and going from basically nothing to a product in our hands. Uh, is this for everybody? No, not at all. Am I gonna shoot this more? Mm, I bought two rolls of film. I used half for this video. That way I had another half in case everything got messed up. So I've got one and a half rolls. Yes, I'm going to use it. Am I going to use it for anything important? No. Am I gonna use it for stuff that's fun? Absolutely. Uh, may get one of those little like uh, point and shoot half frame cameras or something and just play with it. That'll be really grainy being half a frame blown up. Um, but mostly I need to shoot that other 
roll of film so that we can see how this stuff prints optically in the darkroom. And we're going to find out because hopefully that'll be the next video I'm able to do in the next week or two. It is the holidays. Might get gummed down with that. So it might be more like two to three weeks, but we'll see. Uh, but if you're looking for a fun film and you want to support their efforts, go out and get some. Uh, go out and get a bunch. I believe they made something around 50,000 rolls. Not exactly sure on that, but I would say it's a full master roll and it should be out there for a good while. Um, unless there are 10,000 of us buying five rolls a piece. they would be all gone. And hopefully that funds the next generation and hopefully that next generation will be even better. All right. Thanks for watching. I appreciate your time. Hopefully this gave you some insight into some of the characteristics of this film. Um, and get out there and shoot. If you want to help support this channel so we can buy film that clearly Ilford is not going to send to us, then you can go to my uh, store and get shirts such as this, or you can buy some re-rolled US made E6 film, or you can go join the membership tab or the Super Thinks, and it's appreciated. We'll see you next time.